What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Reggie Casual. We back again in our very first episode. We back in our very first episode of the SOS, the Science of Style. Pretty much every Monday, unless we say Western time, your boy is gonna introduce you to a concept, some brands, inspiration, or whatever to assist in creating your ultimate wardrobe. Now, keep in mind, this is not about telling you how to dress. This is not that. I am, though, gonna somehow combine the philosophy of Western and Eastern style to hopefully encourage, inspire, and, I don't know, help you build a wardrobe that is specifically tailored for you. So today, we start from the beginning. Your essentials. What are they? How you should look at them? And some concepts maybe you should consider. So, let's get it. Still not done with that new intro. <laughs> Still not done with it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and nip this right in the bud. The biggest misunderstanding there is when we're talking essentials is that most people confuse essentials with basics. And I'm here to tell you, essentials are not basics. Basic pieces can be essentials, but not all essentials are basics, if you get what I mean. More clearly, they should be the basics of your style. That sounds less confusing in my head, so how about an example? My essentials are based on long flowing silhouettes, boxy options, layering options, drape, so even my most plain pieces have those properties to them, or at least suggest that property. So instead of buying a plain long sleeve tee, I would buy a long sleeve that has the properties of the silhouette I gravitate towards most, because that's what I focus on. This way, even your most basic outfits are still 100% showcase ready. A little East versus West action here. We like that kind of action. If we start from America and we keep going East to the popular fashion centers and countries in the world, the turnover rate for trends slows down considerably. Hear me out. America has the highest trend turnover rate in the world due to the concentration of celebrities that dominate the trend sphere. This isn't the only reason, but it is definitely a big reason why Americans in the fashion space tend to have multiple styles in their closet rather than a definitive singular one. Now, as you move Eastern to Europe and eventually Asia, the turnover slows down considerably. Europe and Asia fashion centers tend to have fashion enthusiasts who maintain one particular style and build on top of that style until you get to Japan where the trend rate is incredibly slow as settling in on one style and finding ways to further stretch its inspirations is pretty much the way to go. All that is to say that this particular philosophy that I'm about to tell you takes a bit of that Euro-Asia approach to building those essentials. Because I'm sure you've heard a thousand and one times both on this platform and others about the essentials every guy or gal should have or the shoes essentials for the modern blah, 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 blah. Basically, your essentials are gonna be different from my essentials and most likely gonna be different from her essentials. Most likely. Most likely. But how do we build those essentials effectively and efficiently without spinning racks on racks on racks, on racks, on racks. Well, most people either knowingly or unknowingly build essentials based off of three main style theories, all with varying degrees of difficulty to master, but none more powerful than the other in their conceptualization. Can I say that? I think so. The easiest, lifestyle. Building essentials based off of a preferred activity or interest is quite easy. I mean, you think workwear, Americana, athleisure, skate, military mix, and the punk influence family. Usually these styles are already prepared for you. The middle tier, silhouette, where your boy makes his home. Individuals that can wear a plethora of different themes and concepts as long as it maintains a desired shape and or drape or cut that they prefer. And finally, the hardest, blocking. Individuals that focus on coordination, patterns, and texture to fill out their wardrobe. And the only reason why it's hard is because it's not based in something like interest or something technical like silhouette or shape. The truth is most people will probably use a combination of all three. For instance, I definitely consider texture and a lot of the pieces I decide to purchase. But not knowing the direction you strongly lean towards could lead 
to a haphazard closet with very little direction. So essential rule number one, that, that actually took a long time to get to, decide what direction your wardrobe will take. Now the best way to do this is to find out what styles via pictures, Instagram, whatever, labels, designers you like, and build your essentials according to that. Buy the basics of that style. So even when you're wearing those essentials, your style is clearly visible to everybody and yourself. Now, this doesn't mean go out and buy a ton of designer-ish if you're inspired mostly by that. I don't want you buying Hermes all over the place. It just means figure out what moves you when you look at those pictures and designers and get to the basics of that inspiration. Something that effectively embraces the methodology of what you're looking at without actually buying the expensive stuff. Easier said than done, but when you get used to it, it is clutch. Because as you fill out your closet with those essentials, of that style, you will eventually expand using a technique called upgrading, which is self-explanatory, but it's actually pretty cool in practice, so we'll definitely cover it in a future episode. All right, so we can't do this without showing you an example. Let's take two outfits, my outfits, you know? Converse All-Stars, slim fit denim, long sleeve button up, notice the length of the shirt, following my personal philosophy of silhouette before anything. Second fit, same exact thing, but the shirt has a change, giving off a different vibe, but following the same principles of silhouette that I've established. And look what happens when I add an additional essential, like a denim jacket, but still following the same rules that I set in place. And now look what happens when you get to expansion. Using a sweater from Public Tokyo and an overshirt from No ID, you can further the idea of your particular silhouette. But notice how both pieces still follow the personal rules of silhouette I set for myself. Now that's six outfits using the same setups with different vibes totally, but following the methodology of choice all because the essentials were decided, which are effectively outfits in their own right. And let's not get into when you start changing fabrics and textures and swapping, the possibilities and combinations are literally endless. And that gets us to rule two, which is the final rule that we have here, maximize the effectiveness of each essential piece you get. What's great is if you're in the camp of multi-styles, you pretty much have a template for your favorite styles already. Because most people that have multiple styles in their closet are more silhouette driven without even knowing, at least in my experience, because they have a certain way that they like to wear their clothes. That is the science of style from the beginning, the essentials. But it isn't all me. If you have any tips for the community at large, let them be known in the comments. Or if you have any questions or requests, ask, and you may receive them on the channel. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international fashion, culture, and business. From Tokyo, it's your boy, and keep it casual. Yoroshiku And I'll see you guys in a minute.